I'm Rob Lucuria, Senior Editor at God Derby here with Tracy Oliver, creator, writer and showrunner on Amazon's Harlem. Um, Tracy, this show explores the ups and downs um, of professional and personal relationships. That's, what, that's really what resonates with me most of all. Um, life within a faculty, culture, uh, this woman's existential crisis in making her way through the world. Um, so why did you decide to call the show Harlem? Well, we kind of debated it, but the reason I landed on Harlem was because I kept seeing all of these shows set in New York, and then a lot of people of color were kind of gentrified out of the shows on air. And so I, in thinking about, okay, what's the New York that I lived in and that I loved, it was Harlem. And it just had like such like a cultural impact for me, like the style, the the music, the people, everything about it has a rich history. And so when you say like you live in Harlem or you're from Harlem and you're, if you, if you just say the word Harlem in New York, it has like a connotation to it that just gives a lot of people joy. And so I couldn't think of another word that really captured the essence of the show more than using the city itself. So that was kind of the, the reason behind it. Yeah. it's. Almost like, I mean, it sounds kind of cliche, but it's almost like another the fifth character in the show because it really is about the place as well as the four women particularly. Um, and I found that really interesting. Obviously, I don't live in Harlem, so I just felt like it was really immersive at, about the time and place as well. Um, so yeah. Harlem centers on four women, played by Megan Good, Grace Byers, Shanika Shanday, and Jerry Johnson. Good in particular is fa a fascinating um, choice. She plays a central character, Camille, um, and she's going through her own struggles with her boss and with her ex, her ex who play, who's played by Tyler Lepley. Um, so I'm just curious, talk, talk us through the casting of the four women. You get one of those wrong, the show's not going to work, right? And particularly for Camille, she's a central character. If she's not quite right, the show's going to struggle. So talk me through that challenge and the pressure of getting that right. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're exactly right. In those ensemble comedies, the casting is everything. I mean, it was similar with Girls Trip, but you just have to nail the chemistry between everybody. And if you don't, like the, the show doesn't work because you have to buy into the friendship. And so with Megan, I'll be honest, I never imagined casting her as Camille. And my mind, I had like an idea of, I didn't have a specific actress in mind, but I had an image in my head. And that's what's so beautiful about casting is that sometimes an actor will see something that you didn't necessarily see and then when it comes together you're like oh i get it so megan had actually reached out after reading the script and said i know i could do camille and so i was like well you know what i didn't see that but let me meet her and then and i'll tell you my bias um megan is <laughs> clearly drop dead gorgeous and known known for that. And so I was kind of like, is she too pretty? Is she gonna be relatable? Is she gonna be able to tap into this like quirkiness and awkwardness that I like visualize with the character? I'm not sure. And then when I met her in person, she is so much more like Camille than where she's been put in this box. And so she was like, you know, I, I'm kind of wanting to do comedy and wanting to break out of just doing stuff that I can be like the love interest or the pretty face. I want to do something that's like more like my real personality. And we just vibes because she's just like kind of an awkward person in life. And so I was like, oh, wow, now I see it. And then from there, I just wanted to give her like the locks and give her a different look than I'd seen in any other show or movie that she'd done to kind of just introduce her in a way that we hadn't seen Megan Good before. But the challenge with that is, you know, people do have their ideas of who she is. You know, when you've been around since she's a child actress, like when you've been around for that long, it's hard to reinvent. So we, you know, we put a lot of like specifics into the wardrobe and the hair and she's never dressed like that on screen and, and done a, a role like this. And I just thought she fell into it really, really well. And then with the other three, we did like a Kim read and they just loved each other immediately. And like, I saw that magic happen and I was like, okay, I feel like we found every single person. And what I also liked about them, and it wasn't deliberate, but they all were different 
shapes and sizes and complexions and you got to see like a full you know breadth of, of, of black beauty so not everybody looks the same too 100 percent. and you used the word awkward before and i think it's <laughs> megan's awkwardness that i i find so endearing because she is stunningly beautiful and so engaging but there's something about her awkwardness that makes her endearing then which also then is a part of the reason why the show can be so funny um and I think that's a huge, huge part of this show for you, I would expect, would be to, to work out when to dial up the funny and when to go back to the more dramatic elements. Did you find that um, shift back and forth between those particular tones difficult to get right? Hmm, that is a good question. It's always a challenge. And I would say that every single thing I've done is a dramedy. I think that with varying degrees, I something will be more comedic or more dramatic, but I always kind of try to straddle the middle and that's purely because I feel like that's life. Like even when you're having a good time, um, it can be rooted in something painful. Like you could be coming out of a, a breakup and going out to go clubbing and that's what we do in the show. Or you can, you know, the opposite is true too, where like you can be going through it and then someone tells a funny joke or something really crazy happens and that kind of like disrupts the dramatic moment. And so for me, it just didn't, it never feels authentic to just live in a, in a broad space in that way because I want to be able to tell like the full scope of stuff that I go through. And a lot of my life is fun and funny and some of it is kind of like dramatic and you're dealing with family issues and you're dealing with breakups and all that stuff. And so I just wanna be able to tonally be able to accomplish everything. But um, yeah, it can be challenging because you're always trying to figure out, is this gonna throw the audience that this episode is a little more dramatic and the last one was super broad. So, and I, I have to you know, give it up to um, Donald Glover, I think, when I saw it in Atlanta, that was the first time I really felt like in the comedic space, someone just threw tone to the wit and it was just like every single episode to me felt like a different thing and so what i liked about it it was just kind of freeing and so in with my like struggles with tone i was kind of like and i still never did depart in the way that donald did but my my point was that i just thought you know what maybe like there aren't any rules with when you're on cable maybe you can be more dramatic sometimes maybe you can just have an episode that's broad and not think so structured and you know rigid about how you do it yeah, absolutely. That totally makes sense. And it reminded me of Atlanta and the chair and insecure. Mm -hmm. and shows that just there, this is a super character driven show. Speaking of, uh, and now I'm being slightly facetious here, but you had the audacity after writing a super successful movie, Girls Trip, shepherding your own stylish, beautifully written comedy. And then you managed to get Whoopi Goldberg. Like I went into the show not knowing anything. Right? I just watched it, enjoyed it, thought it was beautiful. And then as soon as she turns up, I'm like, How? what? She's a legend. She's a national treasure. She's probably my, my favorite actor of all time. How on earth did you manage to, to make that work with her? Because she is so good as Camille's prickly boss. I love her in this show. She's amazing and does it so effortlessly. And when I was thinking about that character, because I was like, who would be my dream cast? And so I thought, you know, Whoopi Goldberg, but she's never gonna do this. And so <laughs> when you when you work with the budget level that I work with, I try really, really hard, but I'm always disappointed. And so I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to get this guest star or I'm never gonna be able to get like my dream person. This is just not gonna work. And like, let me just go ahead and wrap my mind around a local hire. And so <laughs> when I said Whoopi Goldberg, like casting was like, ah, she's particular. She's got the view. It's going to be really hard. And I was like, let's just try. She's my childhood, like, you know, favorite from Sister Act and Sister Act 2 in particular, Sister Mary Clarence and Ghost and all of those. She's just my favorite. So when she said yes, I think I literally started crying. That's how like excited I was. And then just meeting her in person and she was so lovely. And the fact that she was familiar with me and my work was also humbling for me. And I just was like, thank you. And I was just effusive in praise that she even did it. I was like, you don't even have to be good. I'm just glad you're here. But then she was good on top of it. And I was like, oh my God, she's just, yeah, she's incredible.
she's incredible. She's so she's intimidating. She's larger than life, yeah. and it just adds this extra element to the show that I wasn't expecting and really enjoyed. Tracy, thank you for your time today. Congrats on an amazing first season, and uh, we'll bring you back for a group chat shortly. Okay, great. Thank you.